Hi, everyone. I wanted to address two issues that I forgot to mention yesterday. The first one was about having a Skype account, and someone had asked if I have a Skype account but I'm not sure of my Skype name, my account name, what can I do? And the answer to that is to go to Skype, and then on the first tab of your, when it opens up, go to the word Skype on the left side, and then go down to profile, and from profile, scroll over to edit your profile, and then it will bring up your information, and you can fill in city, state, and anything else that you might want to add there as well. I did not mention that you could also put a video on your Skype account if you're interested, and also a picture. The other thing about webcams, the software that came with the webcam that we have here at work was not as updated as the software on the website, so whichever group you decide to go with, install from the website's software and not from the CD that comes with the webcam, because it will be a lot newer. Now, about virtual office visits, the very first question, we've had a couple of illustrators and authors ask this, can we use PowerPoint presentations? Many illustrators do that, that's mostly what they do for their presentations, they use PowerPoints. The only thing I've been able to think through, and I did try to Google this and see if there was anything else that could perhaps be used, and you might want to do the same thing, is that if you have a PowerPoint presentation, to send that to the organizer of the school event before you have the event, and then go through the PowerPoint presentation with the organizer, going through it in their facility while you discuss the presentation where you are, and then the day of, you'll just repeat that same presentation, and you'll be able to work with timing, or you can have a cue as to when to move to the next slide. That's the only thing I can think of outside of actually having a PowerPoint presentation behind you. I don't think that would be as effective as if it were right there with the students. And then someone else asked if these virtual visits are more chatty and less designed to be interactive, and actually they can be as interactive as you want. You are going to probably do just as much talking as you would if you were there at the site, but as far as having props or things like that, what you can do is give the organizer of the school a list of what's needed, and then they can provide all of those props there at the site, and then as you walk through them, again, you will want to work with the media specialist ahead of time, or whoever is the contact at the school, so that you can have a better timing than if it were just something that you would just go into cold. Okay, I hope that answers that one. The next one, and that had also brought up dressing up audience members, because some people do that, and just again, just make sure that you have sent out a list to the organizer with all the props and all of whatever else you might need to use, and then just have them know that at this time in the schedule you're going to do this, or just, like I said, have a cue as to when they need to do the next thing. Okay, so what is the structure for these kinds of visits, these kinds of classroom visits? And the structure is actually any way you'd like to do this. If you only want to do one session per class, then we can do that. It's just whatever you feel most comfortable with. If you want to have an assembly type session, just remember that only a few students at a time can be seen, because there's not a lot of space in the camera to pick up the other groups behind you, but it can still be done that way. Video conferencing, one of our authors, or actually several of you have had video conferencing with a group in Philadelphia, I believe is where they are located, and if you know video conferencing, you'll know that one group or one room is actually interacting with the person doing the video conference, but other people can also pick up those programs 
if they turn on their television set. That's just the way the schools are organized. So we will make sure that we state that there are no videotaping involved in this, unless, of course, you don't mind that, and that also it's okay for other classrooms to watch or to listen in, but, of course, they won't be able to participate. However, you do need to be aware that if they are using the whole school system to do the video conference, that other classrooms who aren't a part of it, if they decide to turn on their television at that time, will be able to see and hear the program just as easily. So that's something to keep in mind. And that brings up the getting permission. If you are fine with schools taping your presentations, although I have yet to come across that, but if you are fine with your presentation being taped, then we can work that out. But if not, it will be the same as when you would visit at a regular site. It's just that they would have to get permission ahead of time. Now, the next set of questions deal with specifically morning versus afternoon. And I was told that the morning is always better because there are less people on the computers at that time, which would be less distractions. But really, it's just whatever you decide to work out. If you are working with a specific class and they want you to do the virtual visit in the afternoon and you're fine with that, I don't see a problem with it. It's just more or less, I guess, whatever is best for your schedule as well as the school schedule, whoever you're working with. And I don't know if it does matter if you have your presentation in the morning or afternoon. It seems like it would be okay either way, but you might have to test that. Another question was whole day versus half day. Again, it's just your preference. I can't imagine sitting in one spot for more than a couple of hours talking to a video cam and seeing the people on your screen, but you can decide if that's okay for you. I would suggest doing maybe one or two visits and then deciding, kind of adjusting that as you go along. Some people are fine doing all day visits, and if that's okay for you, if you do things that will get you moving around, then I think that would be fine too. It's just whatever is your preference. And then the last question here is between sessions, if there's a lunch or a break, would you hang up and then would they call you back? And I'm assuming that that would probably be the case where you would need to hang up if there's a long break between sessions and then call back, and that's easy enough to do. And for those of you who are interested in doing residences where you were working with one group or a few groups with the same school and it took place over a period of a week, then of course you have to hang up for those too. And then the other thing, I said that was the last question. However, someone asked would we be able to speak with someone at the school before the visit, and that's absolutely. You'll need to contact the person before you do your presentation just to test to make sure that your Skype connection is working. And that's the end of the questions for today. Tomorrow we'll talk about fees and how much you might want to charge groups. But I'm looking down here about book plates, and I know that that might be of interest. And book plates will be available for the schools if you want to do signed copies of books. And so we will have enough book plates available for that. All right, that's the end of this session.